Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about streaking, simple streaking. Uh, how to create rust streaks and weathering and rain streaks on your miniatures uh, using just very simple paints and inks and stuff like that. So streaking is something that I think always looks awesome on a vehicle. It makes it very realistic. Um, vehicles that sit outside, that go to war, that are in long campaigns, uh, anywhere where there is extreme weather, the you know sort of basic paints we would assume these vehicles have would weather would chip and you would see streaks in fact even beyond that um just simple weathering streaks and lines and just when water falls on things and then dries it leave behind it leaves behind uh dust and dirt and detritus uh from the atmosphere so streaking is a very common thing to see on static vehicles that don't regularly clean themselves uh, as i'm sure you'll know if you have a car and you've driven it during a rainstorm and then you know, parked it in a garage or something and let it dry. So here I've got a little custom vehicle I had been working on recently, and it's already got all of its sort of damage and rusty spots uh, applied. And so today we're gonna go through ways to make some simple streaks using just, you know, basic paint, okay? So what do I have here? Well, in a little palette, I have four things. One of them is basically invisible because it's white. <laughs> But first here, I have some Contrast Agreros Dunes. Contrast paints are actually really awesome for streaking because they naturally shrink. And so that's kind of what you want. It gives you a faded outside and a stronger inside. Over here, I've got some Contrast Medium uh, to both thin that and have some other effects. Down here in the corner, I have some Dalarowney FW Burnt Umber. And then finally, right here, I have some Brown Glaze from War Colors. Now, these are the things I happen to be using. Any brown ink, any brown paint will work. You can get out your uh, your Agrax Earthshade and use that in much the same way I'm going to use these. You can uh, get out just a simple straight brown paint or an orangey brown paint, okay? All of that is perfectly fine. Now, I happen to be using this clean palette uh, just, because, just so I can show you exactly what I'm doing. But keep in mind, you could just as easily put all these on your wet palette, and that's normally where I would work from, but that's okay. We're going to keep it keep it simple today, so I wanted to start fresh, so you what I, show you what I do here. So we're going to start with grabbing a little bit of that Agreros Dunes. I'm just going to slap it out here on the middle part of the palette. We're going to grab some of that contrast medium, just thin that out. We can see how that gets nice and thin. I'll take just a little touch of water in there as well, just a touch. Okay, so what I get is a nice thin mix that looks like that. Then I'm going to wick the brush off on a paper towel, very important. Don't want too much excess. Then I'm going to pick one of my streaks here. <laughs> Clear off the dog here. I'm going to pick one of my streaks here. Let's pick this one. I'm going to pick some part of it that I think would be interesting to have a streak come down from. I'm going to hold the brush stationary. Like, you notice I don't vertically move the brush. I start here with it rather flat and pushed out, and then I just, as you can see as I go down, I draw it away. Let's do another one here, All right? And so what I get is just that nice, subtle streak. I'll do another one here. These little wings make it hard to work. One thing to say about this is you want these to always be of varying lengths don't make a bunch of the same size streak. Your brain is gonna want to create evenness. Human brains like when things are even, when there is symmetry and things like that. That is the opposite of what you want here. Nature is random, All right? So we can start down here where it's a little easier. It should still show on camera. Let's put a nice little short streak out of this one. Maybe we'll run a real long one down here, like way down. You notice I can put a little short one next to it. Just be kind of random with it. Sometimes out of the big spots, sometimes out of the deeper spots, they can run different lengths. You can have multiples in there. Maybe we got a small one there, a big one right next to it, All right? So we just get these nice, simple faded streaks. You even don't have to necessarily bring it from just from the rust. You could run a small one down here from like the edge of this, uh, the edge of that 
corner where water would theoretically gather right up top there, collect at the edge, and then spill over and leave behind some some residue. Now, there's a lot of products out there for this. I'm going to let those all dry for a second, and then we'll do the next one. And while we do, we'll just talk about some other stuff. There's plenty of products on the market, like streaking grime and enamels and stuff like that. All those products are great. All those products are fine. There's nothing wrong with any of them. You can produce lots of cool effects. I dig them. I use some of them. There's nothing wrong with them. But we're not all going to go out and buy a huge amount of those different... And there's there's just so many now. <laughs> and we're not all going to go out and buy all of them. So what I wanted to do with this tutorial was show you that you can do that, but you can also just keep it nice and simple. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that uh, Agreros Dunes straight. This time I'll just grab a little tiny bit of contrast medium just to keep that flowing. Sorry. But it'll be much thicker. Again, wick off the excess. And then what I'm going to do is over the same area where I went before, but a little less, down the center of those lines, trace a little darker spot. Maybe to one side, maybe make a one or two new ones here or there. The key with what you're doing here is you're reinforcing that near the area where the rust is, okay, is where the most streaking is going to be. So more water will have come out. Sometimes a lot of water will spill out, sometimes a lot. Sometimes it will be very intense. So, you know, there'll be like a lot of water that gathers up there. Sometimes it won't, right? And that's just fine. Let's run a little bit here. We didn't get that one previously, but that's a nice deep scar, right? Okay. So you can just reinforce the areas near the top. You can apply that a couple times. Just kind of really enrich that. If you're using something like just Agrax, then you just keep using the same one. You don't necessarily need to thin those as much. Well, you can. You can use a little Lamia medium, a little contrast medium, something like that. Now let's grab a little bit of that Dollar Rowney ink. That's a little, that's super intense stuff, right? Once again, I'm going to grab just a little bit of contrast medium in there because... It's super intense, and the contrast medium, what it's doing is it has a lot of flow improver in it, makes it flow right off the brush, makes it shrink up on a large flat space. That's all properties we want here. Now what I'm going to do is come into those areas and just really draw some nice thin lines. Okay, so we'll go down here. Again, I'm focusing these just like little, nice, sharp lines right near the actual area. I won't do all the streaks. Some of them will be a little more faded. Some will be a little more strong. You don't want to do all of them equally. There needs to be variance, okay? That's the key. If everything has the same number of streaks in exactly increasing amounts, it's going to look fake. <clears throat> Nature is very random. Hence, you need to disconnect your brain from its overwhelming desire to make everything be symmetrical. Now we're just going to take some of that straight ink, and I'm going to pick one or two of these. And we'll just do some real nice, strong lines there. You, again, you can stay inside what you did previously. And that's fine. We can also make a few little new ones. As long as they're little short things. Okay, so there we get a nice, uh, you can see now we have that nice variance in the streak. It looks real natural up near where the, the, the rust actually is happening. It's much more intense. Now for the last step, I'm going to take some of this brown glaze here from Warcolors. This is naturally very thin. 
If you don't have this brown glaze, it's no problem. You can always just make this out of like an orange or an orange brown paint. You see how orange that looks on the palette. I've just mixed it with a little contrast medium. It's already very, very thin. This is great if you have uh, one of the light color orangish contrast paints or anything like that. I just happen to really like this tone. But you notice how unbelievably thin that is. That's what we're aiming for, that level of thinness. Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come in with the side of the brush. I'm just gonna kinda color some of these streaks here especially up top. Again, if you had that orange contrast paint, you'd just be wiping that real light. You can go completely over some of the streaks here. You might want to go all the way down. Not going to hit every one of them, just some of them. What you're trying to show here is where there's more rust inside, more of that orange color is going to leak out. And so when you tint that in there, it just gives you that real nice touch of that orangish color into your tint. And that's it. That's all there is to it. I think it looks so wonderful and natural. It's just going through some steps like that. Like I said, you can go in, you can go back to any of these steps you want. Um, you can reinforce these things back and forth. So for example, down here, if I wanted that streak to be a little stronger, I could take some of my pure, uh, pure burnt umber ink. I could run a thinner line down the middle of that. All right, and then that feels so much more intense. So that's really all there is to it. You don't have to, again, you see there's spots here that I didn't run anything out of, some that I did, some that are heavier, some that aren't. You can see how it varies in length and size of how long they go. No two are the same. That's it, that's all there is to it. And you can get this effect really fast, as you see here, really easy, and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, you can put here, I did it over the white part because I knew it would be very visible on camera. But of course, you can do it over the, the metals right next to it or anything. Um, you can do the same trick if you, this is all brown tones uh, here, what I have for normal rust. But of course, you, if you have a lot of copper, you could do the exact same trick for oxidation and have that kind of stuff running out. It'll look just as natural there with, say, a blue green and anilic oxide and a goss blaster green or something like that, whatever, you know kind of any of those, that same color combination you saw me work with here, but with blue green colors. So the key is you want to apply them very thin. You start broad, let it dry and shrink up, and then you create thinner, more intense areas near the top where the actual damage or rust or source of it is. You can go in and add orange tints to them. You can reinforce with darker browns. You can even work in some blacks. Uh, so if you've got a little bit of black ink or something like that, you can do a streak or two of that, maybe mixed with a little of the brown. Get really, really intense, dark rust running out of there, okay? The options are, the, 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 it's, it's an endless number of options here. And as long as they're moving vertically, that's always the key. Think about how would this thing be sitting if it was just sitting here and make sure that the streaks follow gravity. That's the, that's the only key. So on a round thing like this, this streak is gonna come down here and then this one will come down here and then maybe run along the side, maybe a little bit of run over the top and fall there. Out of this screw, it would fall straight down here. Just follow the line straight down where gravity goes and you'll be fine. That's all there is to it. It's super easy, it's super fast, and I think it looks great. So there you go. If you've got any questions, drop them down below. Always happy to help. Uh, if you've got suggestions for future videos, please do drop those down there. I always like to see suggestions for future topics. Uh, as always, give this a like if you liked it. I really appreciate that. It helps other people find these videos. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. Uh, we have new videos here every Saturday. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.